All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Chupacabra's Lair. I'm your host, Larry the Chupacabra, and today we're going to check out another dungeon-crawling experience of the fantasy variety with Heroes of Loot 2 by Orange Pixel. And Heroes of Loot 2 is a similar yet different spin on your classic procedurally generated dungeon-crawling experience. And instead of going through levels and just gathering up boatloads of items and talent trees and characters and 50 different character abilities and stuff, Heroes of Loot 2 kind of condenses everything down to its most pure form. So we are going to overwrite my existing game with a normal round and we're going to play with the wizard and... Do we want the elf? I guess we'll go with the wizard. And I like to play with the Valkyrie. And this is a game where you just have a team of two people and you rove around the dungeon just destroying things and talking with people. Uh, this guy is just telling us how to do the basic movesets. And you're just looking for loot, you're gonna murder all the monsters. And the story really is that after, like, you know, the kingdom was defended and everything was hunky-dory, our heroes were bored and they needed something to do. So we sought out adventure and mystery and found out that there's a castle out here who needs some people to crawl through their dungeon and touch the butts and take all the sweet, delicious loot and get all famous and stuff. And I assume that that story takes place from what has happened in the previous game of Heroes of Loot 1, of which I have not played and I'm not super familiar. But so far, I kind of pretty well enjoy this game. It's, it's a very simplified dungeon crawling experience and I would call it far more casual than other ones that I've played. And there's a whole lot of different critters in here that you can encounter. There's little bugs and skeletons that crawl up from the depths of the crypt. And each one of these little levels can include different side missions that you find out from the people that you talk to. So down here the mission is we gotta go find a key. So that's our grand quest on this level. We just gotta find a key to do the stuff with the things and murder more people. And that's, uh, that's about it, really. And so far, I've rather enjoyed this. There's little traps and other miscreants that wander around, and as you level up, rather than worrying about 50 different skill sets or items that change your skills, you simply get more powerful and you occasionally have the option, with your money, to purchase different items. And I'll just top off my health with a little health potion, even though I didn't really need to. Uh, I found that healing items are really not lacking in this game. Like, you, you do go stretches without them, but if you're smart and you're not too saucy, you don't have to worry too, too much about it. Although, we will have to be careful in this room, because it would seem that there are some spicy spikes that want to impale us. And I'm not the biggest fan of that. So, what do we gotta do here? Do we have to put... I'm gonna have to put, like, a magic crystal in there, probably. But that's fine. We've got lots of environments here to, to roam through to find it and get a level up here. And I do like that each one of these characters sort of has a difference of their, their skill set. Like, this is a Valkyrie chick, and she's all about spinning around with Blade, but her other specialty is finding hidden rooms full of ancient arcane secrets that you might otherwise miss. And we also found a rune stone, and if we get enough of those put together, we will unlock a secret power, a new ability. Well, not really ability, but it'll increase our stats and augment our existing power and make us super duper spicy. And I do like being super duper spicy and touching all of the butts. All of the giant murder butts. Now, I haven't gotten far enough into this game, even though I played it for like half an hour, 45 minutes before, to find a boss, but I would assume that there's one in here somewhere past all these murder mechanisms. So we need to, f did we get a key? You have a key? No, you have a rune stone. Is that what we need to get the key? There was this, yeah, the idol is active now. There's a little glowing thing in the middle of it. All right, let's just wait till this breaks, and then we can just bust in on in here. How does this activate? Do I have to touch you, or are you not a thing, or what's going on here? I guess that's not a thing, so we'll just we'll just mosey on over here. Really? 
I guess I don't have the right item for that. I guess this rune stone is completely unrelated to that. Oh well. Easy come, easy go, as they say. So, I, I like it. It's very simplified, and you can just go dungeon crawl and murder things. It's not overcomplicated. I don't have to memorize 50 items. I don't have to try to min-max right off the bat. And that's just... I appreciate not having the excessive amount of min-maxing that so many of these games tend to have. So, we'll just kill everything in the vicinity, and then we'll talk to old Grampy Pants. Oh, Grampy, you're always so adorable with your butt-touching of all the locals. It's great. So what do we got here? Wow, a real Valkyrie in your party? I, I hear you see things others cannot, and with amazing powers that you have. Well, you're right, Grandpa. I, I can see things. Uh, mostly terrifying things that cause me to have the nightmares, but, you know, also, like, the good money-making things, which is always fantastic. We'll get some health items, little food bits on the floor. Now, there are items that you can get in this game, although it seems like most of them are temporary boosts to your abilities, and they are not completely permanent, which is in an interesting change from what I would normally expect. And here we just have a giant pantry full of gold and food and skeletons. I assume a masquerade ball happened up here, but you can never be too sure. Sometimes there's just these weird, demonic, undead, necromantic orgies that happen. Just way too many people into necrophilia, and the irresistible urge to crack open a cold one. You know, all the simple yet important things in life. You gotta... You gotta just keep an open mind, really. And while you try to keep your organs on the inside of your body, anywho. So let's just hop on up here. I guess this is just a really quick level. Some of these levels are just kind of like a cash grab. Some of them, they're just whatever. Oh, here we go. You're about to enter an arena room. Only one of you may enter! So we should make a decision. Yes, you should, Squire. Let's... I'm just gonna spin around as the Valkyrie. There's really no way to go wrong with a Valkyrie. It's almost cheaty this early on in the game. When you play as a Valkyrie, it's, it's a lot easier than trying to start with, say, a rogue or something. Or an archer. But I do like the ability to have a mage, because I've always been a guy big on casters. I played, you know, Shaman that was kind of like a battle caster inside of World of Warcraft, and I played, you know, Lichdom Battle Mage was an okay game if they'd put more in it. Smashing things can give you experience or health, also relieve stress. I mean, I did learn that from Bloodborne game, I, I am not too unfamiliar with it. Uh, and if you're not familiar with what I'm talking about in Bloodborne, Bloodborne had a lot of pots that you could run through and break. Oh, what's this? Ally it makes you invincible for a short period of time. Oh, that's cool. We got a random, like, power up here. That's cool. I'm just gonna switch back to the Valkyrie for sanity's sake, because this is a spicy room that I don't feel like screwing with. And the other, you know, the other reason I like the Valkyrie is in a lot of these games, you can end up in a room where suddenly a bunch of crap spawns, and if you don't have the ability to deal with it really easily with, like, a spinning attack like this, you can just be shit out of luck. So this is a nice alternative to that. You just, if you get into a tight corner, just switch to your Valkyrie, start spinning to win, and you'll get all of the bacon. Also, there's just a room full of spikes that I can somehow destroy. Just kind of randomly. Not sure why. Maybe we'll find a cool... We might find a cool, like, shop later, where we can get some really sweet upgrades. Because there are some pretty nifty ones in here that do different things, but I won't ruin the surprise. There would be no fun in that. No siree, Bob Arino. Bob's your uncle, Bob's your Mary Jane and Bill. And much like a lot of these games, the goal would really be to just explore as many of these rooms as possible, because you never know what you might find. Like, uh, Thunderclaw costs 170 bucks. I don't have that much money. I can get some magic dice. All characters gain HP. Fantastic. I do like leveling up randomly. Yeah, it's a light-hearted version of your standard dungeon crawler, like, um, Dungeon Souls comes to mind. Binding of Isaac being another one that's very, uh, like, I wouldn't call it a super hardcore one, but it's certainly a lot less forgiving than this one is. 
So let's just bash our way through here. I haven't, you know, it says in the game's description that you can run into levels where you have to light a bunch of candles in order to progress to a secret hidden area. Haven't found one of those yet. Kind of want to, like, hidden puzzles that you don't necessarily expect is just the, the reason for the season. Let's see here, there is a heavy door without a lock. There must be a way to open it. Hmm. You're right. Maybe if I bash it with my face, old man, I'll be able to get the sweet, sultry bacon inside. Also, that's a bomb. And is that an item I can use? Yeah, I can totally huck a bomb. Oh, I see. So it wants me to take a bomb to this heavy door and just huck it. How do I huck it? I... Am I missing something? Oh, there it goes. Boom! And I do like the fact that the, the terrain can change in here. Like, you can blow holes in walls, you can blow holes in the environment, and there's always more exploding to happen. I do definitely enjoy that. It's a, it's a game with lots of stuff that you can unlock. I, I can definitely say I have not been left wanting with this one. So what's the deal? Do I just... Oh, I guess I just have to blow up the area around the wall? Yeah, alright. Well, in that case, I could just throw this here. You know? Is it gonna let me? I guess... I guess it is. There we go. So it goes by my mouse cursor. That's cool. I can aim it then. And I can use this to bash my way through this wall and just forget that door entirely. Because why not? Oh, that's bad. That's not... that's the bad touch. Why is it just hucking it down here? That's not what I want it to do. There we go. Perfect. Excellent. Everyone gets stabbed. Everyone must fi fall before their immortal chupacabra lord. Murdering all of the people and getting a golden thingy that I didn't get a chance to read properly. It, it must be good because it's fancy and it's golden. I assume that's generally how that works. Fancy goldenness. Err. Uh -huh. We'll just throw that in there. It seems like some parts of the environment... Whoa, okay. Were those bombs? No, those were just key items to opening the next part of the dungeon. Got it. But yes, quest complete. Stab your way through and touch everyone in their faces. Now, this, this Valkyrie does seem kind of overpowered, honestly. Like... It seems like she just kind of goes invulnerable to certain things when she spins around. Which kind of seems overpowered? Maybe not. Who knows? Hello. More free stuff. An afterlife rune. Come back to life after being touched in the booty. By probably Cthulhu. Yeah. So anyway, if you're interested in picking up Heroes of Loot 2, and ooh, we got a teleporter. To go deeper into the inside of the dungeon. But if you're interested in Heroes of Loot 2, this is a $10 title, it's available on Steam, and I think a couple of other platforms, don't quote me on that. It's made by Orange Pixel, and also published by them, and I- it's a pretty nice, fun game. Like, I could see myself relaxing, just shooting the shit, and stabbing things in here, and not being too, too worried other than that. So what do I do here? Oh, I get to run around a teleportation level, that's cool. So they introduce you to new mechanics in cute little ways as you go along. So that's it for this one, folks. Links to this game are in the description. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I will catch you guys and gals next time. I thoroughly recommend this game. It's a whole big old frothing bowl of fun. And yeah, that's it for this one, ladies and gentlemen. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Check it out. And I'll catch you later for more delicious indie gamification. So toodles, everybody.